Greetings of the day. My name is Nimisha Seth. I am from Institute of Hotel Management, Pusa. And today's session is on training in the housekeeping department. At the end of this session, the learner will be able to define training, explain the need for training in housekeeping department, list out benefits of training to the organization and the employee, briefly explain the four-step training method. The ability of each member in the organization to perform his or her job will affect the efficiency with which the department will operate. This ability of the staff to perform the tasks will depend on the knowledge and skill already possessed by the employee and can be enhanced by providing effective training. Most employees, regardless of the past experience, would need some degree of training before starting a new job. And it was one of the major responsibilities of the executive housekeeper, along with the training manager, to recognize the need for training and not only devise training modules for the housekeeping staff, but also to conduct them effectively. This will help maximize retention power and increase the performance standard of the employee in the ever-changing dynamic environment of housekeeping. This does not mean that the executive housekeeper becomes a trainer also. The actual imparting of training may be delegated to supervisors or employees who have a good performance. This unit today would help you in being able to plan training for housekeeping staff. However, it must be remembered that training is not limited to one department and hence knowledge gained in this session can be extended to use in any department or any organization that you wish to join. Definition of training Training is a planned process to modify knowledge, skill or attitude through learning experience to achieve effective performance in an activity or range of activities to satisfy the needs of an organization or an individual. Training brings about a positive change in knowledge, skill or competence that we call it, and the attitude of employees. Through training, one tries to improve skills or add on to the existing level of knowledge so that the employee is better equipped to do his present job or to mold him so that he fits into a higher job role involving greater responsibilities. It can also be simply referred to as a process of learning a sequence of programmed behavior. Some organizations hire housekeeping employees who are already trained and have some experience in the field so that they can evade training. While there are other organizations who find it easier to hire completely unskilled people and train them according to the organization's standard operating procedures. The executive housekeeper feels that by hiring completely unskilled people, they do not have to make them unlearn the previously learned undesirable practices. However, most hotels and organizations recognize the need for training that is specifically oriented towards the new experience and will have documented training programs. It must never be forgotten that training is a continuous and never-ending process. Why is training required? Understand that there are tasks that are allotted to individual employees. So what's a task? A task is an individual part of a job and is usually considered to be a discrete unit of work performed by an individual. For example, Bed making is one of the tasks performed by a GRA and many such tasks accumulate to form his job. It usually comprises of a logical and necessary steps in the performance of a duty and each task typically has an identified beginning and ending. Another example of a task of a GRA could be vacuum clean the carpet in a room. The supervisor has observed that there is a gap in performance. That is, 
one GRA takes a lot of time to clean the carpet. On further analysis, and after speaking to the GRA, it is realized that it takes so much time because the GRA does not know how to use the vacuum cleaner properly. So he lacks the basic knowledge and skill. Hence, a performance gap is noted. In this case, the gap can be filled up by training. And later, the GRA is given a small flowchart that he can keep in the room attendance trolley and refer to it if by chance he forgets anything. Thus, performance can be brought to optimum level or the gap can be filled with a small training intervention. Benefits of training Training is the best method to communicate the company's way of doing things, without which the new employee may do work contrary to the company's policy. In brief, the following are the benefits that the organization achieves through well-trained employees. Higher quality performance is obtained by employees who have undergone training and know the method of doing the job or task that is allocated to them. They are not only able to maintain the organization standards, but by following the standard operating procedures, they are also able to minimize wastage. For example, if an employee has imparted training on cleaning agents and their dilution ratios, there will be optimum use of the cleaning agents and no wastage will be caused. In fact, after training employees to use machinery or equipments, there is a reduced expenditure on even the maintenance cost of machines because the employees now are trained to handle them correctly. New entrants are imparted the basic knowledge and skill they need for an intelligent performance of definite tasks, thereby maintaining the organizational standard. So the first and the foremost point that we have spoken about is that you have improved overall productivity and lower wastages. Training helps in reducing the supervisor's supervision time. Trained employees are normally self-motivated. And since they possess the knowledge, skill and the right attitude to perform a task, they require less supervision. And the time thus saved by the supervisor now can be used for more important processes. It is in fact also seen that there is a reduction in accident cases between employees who are trained. Since they are able to use the equipments and agents judiciously, as well as they are able to notice any deviations from standards easily. For example, a trained employee will know how to safely use a vacuum cleaner and then how to clean it and store it properly after rolling all the wires and keeping it the accessories in place. When the quality standards are maintained, the guest satisfaction index automatically goes up. And this is clearly visible since the number of complaints received from the guest will become fewer with time. The staff feels motivated and satisfied, hence leading to them being present at work and not running away causing absenteeism. Various researches have shown that training leads to reduced labor turnover. Training helps prepare employees for more responsible positions and brings about change in attitudes of employees. Trained employees are more acceptable to change and thus create an environment suitable for adapting to new technologies, new procedures very easily. This helps in the growth and improvement of employee skills and knowledge, especially in the fast changing times. Through effective training programs, it is also possible to train the housekeeping employees into being multi-skilled and hence making job rotations possible. Job rotations indirectly help in cutting down the monotony of daily jobs and we have a manpower which is far more flexible. With all this, the major responsibility of the housekeeping still stays. That is to provide a safe, hygienic and clean environment, which is also effectively attained by training. Not only does training affect the organization's performance, it also benefits the employee in a lot of ways. For example, 
during the training program or even during his working cycle after the training his talents could be identified his performance monitored leading to a better performance appraisal and maybe an enhanced increment or increased chances of promotion all this goes in hand in hand with training leading to the employee feeling that he knows the job better and this showcases an increased level of confidence and morale job satisfaction level rises training not only increases the knowledge and skill of the employee but also builds in his attitude towards work which is of prime importance today the employee is more confident about the task to be performed and hence there is no confusion in the way to perform a task or a job there is less stress of job performance and since he or she has learned the best way to do a particular job as per the organization standard the employee is able to perform the task with ease without getting too tired or fatigued today's day we follow a four step training method to train new employees as well as experienced staff members the four steps are prepare present practice and follow up prepare to train is the first step and is used for making a logical sequence for imparting successful training step 1 is to analyze the job that is to be performed by the employee without knowing what each employee is expected to do they cannot be trained properly this involves identifying the job knowledge that is what the employee needs to know to perform his job or her job to the desired standards creating a task list that would give us the total job responsibility of the employee in a sequence of performance something very similar to the task list that you had done for guest room cleaning which started with entering the room and opening the curtains and ended with sweeping or mopping the area next one develops job breakdowns that is for each small task the steps are noted and beside that we write down how to perform each step for example a simple task of a gra making a day, day bed now write down the sequential breakdown step by step of how to make a bed if the organization has written standard operating procedures or sops we could just refer to them for the same next analyzing new employee training needs this is done with the help of a task list but since we cannot expect the new employee to learn all the tasks before the first day on the job hence we rate the tasks according to first what should he know before working alone on the job second what should he know within 2 weeks of his joining the job and third what should he know within a month or two of the job training is first imparted on what we have marked as the employee should know before working alone on the job once this is done then the other tasks are introduced in the training session each training session should be done according to the standard operating procedures for that task which will list all the steps employees must perform and how for every new employee training must be done at a very slow pace so that the new employee does not get overwhelmed with the kind of knowledge and skill and the retention power is more analyzing current employee training needs is as important as for new employees sometimes the executive housekeeper or the supervisor notice that there is a problem with the employee's work or several employees work many a times it is seen as a low performance level or may be noted through increasing number of guest complaints sometimes we notice an increase in accident rate etc many a times the reasons are visible 
Sometimes the reasons are not visible. And it's just a feeling that something is quite not right with the staff. But we don't know where to start making improvements. Hence, training need analysis is done to help uncover the weakness or lack of knowledge and skill of individual employees. To do a training need analysis, the present performance is observed as they are working independently, their performance noted for a few days and recorded. Areas in which employees show poor performance are targeted for refresher training. The next step is to develop a departmental training plan. Normally, a good housekeeper makes training programs in advance for the next three months. It is recommended to plan one month before the beginning of each quarter so that the people responsible for imparting training are better prepared with the training module. The trainer fully reviews and makes a copy of the knowledge sections and standard operating procedures or SOPs that will be used in training. A training schedule is established in detail with the training time, the location, etc. so that the employees can be informed in advance about the same. Since the trainer has the time to practice the training presentation, the quality of training is obviously enhanced. One also has enough time to gather all the training aids and the supplies required for an effective knowledge or skill session. After step one, that is prepare, comes presenting. This is a step wherein actual imparting of training takes place or can be referred to as the learning event. The employees are told the topic of the session beforehand so that they get a chance to prepare themselves. Each step of training should be well explained and skills demonstrated wherever and whenever possible. It is recommended that each employee should be able to see exactly what is being demonstrated. The training session should not be threatening. It should be non-threatening and employees should be encouraged to ask questions wherever they need more information. Be sure to take enough time when presenting the training. A trainer should not move too fast with the topic since the main motive is that the employee understands. Hence, the trainer moves carefully, slowly, and patiently, especially when the employees find it difficult to understand a topic. Steps can be repeated once or twice for added clarity. The language used by the trainer should be very simple and understandable. Otherwise, the training program will be useless. Audio or video recording may be done to act as a ready reckoner if required in the future by the employee. Next comes step three, that is practice. At the end of the training session, when the trainer and the trainee or the learner both agree that they are familiar with the job, the employee or the trainee try to perform the tasks alone. The executive housekeeper should ensure that immediate practice of the task is made possible for the employee after training. Sometimes at this stage, we use coaching method that will help the employee gain the skill and confidence necessary to perform the job. The last step is follow-up. This includes a number of things that the supervisor or housekeeper can do to make it easier for their employees to re-enter the workplace after training. For example, one can continue coaching on the job or give constant feedback after giving the employee enough opportunity to use and demonstrate the new skill that he had learnt during the training program. Last but not the least, the employee's progress after the training is evaluated to measure the outcomes of training and also to help identify the areas that the employee could be provided further training in. 
and practice for tasks that have not yet been mastered. All training records for each person who receives training are maintained and the training history of each employee is tracked by keeping a copy of the training log in the employee's personal files. There can be three kinds of training in the housekeeping department. First, the existing employees need training to refresh themselves and enable them to keep up with the new methods, technology changes and techniques of work. This type of training is known as refresher training. Second, new employees are also imparted training to help them get acquainted with the work environment and fellow colleagues. This is commonly known as induction training. It is a short informative training just after recruitment to introduce the employee with the organization's rules, regulations, procedures and policies. The third is remedial training which is carried out for existing employees when there is a change in working style due to change in technology or processes by the organization. A quick recap of the session today. We started the session with defining training as a planned process to modify knowledge, skill and attitude through learning experience to achieve effective performance, inner activity or range of activities to satisfy the needs of an organization or an individual. Then we discuss the need for training as for new as well as current employees since training was a continuous process where one not only refreshes previously acquired knowledge and skill but learns about new trends, new technologies and processes. Which led us to the benefits of training not only for the organization but also the employee. Moving on to the four stage training method, which has four steps prepare and make a logical sequence for imparting successful training, which would start from anticipating the need for training, performing a training need analysis, and devising the training program. The next step is presenting, that is, the actual learning session where the actual imparting of training takes place. Then comes practice where trainees use their knowledge and skill gained in the training program in actual work situations. And the last is follow-up and evaluation of employees' progress after the training to measure the outcome of training and also to help identify the areas where further training can be given. And lastly, we discussed the three types of training, induction training for new employees to familiarize them with the organization, Refresher training for existing employees to help them keep pace with changing times. And third, remedial training when there is a change in working style noticed. We wind up with this session today and in the next session we will move into the step-by-step -step procedure to be followed while devising training programs for housekeeping employees. Thank you. And have a great day.